We're going to graph this function using transformations. And what we're going to do is perform them in the order written here. Uh, before we do that, we have to start with the base function. Now, let's go ahead and write all the uh, transformations that are happening here. Well, first I'll start by highlighting them. Uh, we're going to do the uh, horizontal stretch first. So the horizontal stretch, stretches are always multiplications, so that's the horizontal stretch. The I'll write that down. So we're going to stretch it horizontally. Now it's the opposite. We're multiplying by a half, but it actually means we're going to stretch by the opposite of multiplying by a half is multiplying by two. So it's going to get twice as wide. Once we're done stretching, we're going to shift. Now where's the shift? The shift is the plus two here. That plus two, uh, positive two seems like you're going to the right, but all the horizontals are backwards. So you're actually going to go to the left two. Uh, now the vertical stretch is all the verticals happen. Now here's the function itself is the square root function. When you ignore the half and the plus two, your base function is just the square root of x. I like to use b of x for the base function, b for base. And we need to know what the graph of the square root function looks like. We'll graph that in a minute. Uh, but that was in the last section. And then we'll perform these transformations. So we're almost done with transformations. Vertical stretch, negative 1 half. So we're going to stretch it. Now this does stretch 1 half as tall, but the negative means all the positive y values become negative and vice versa. Now last is vertical shift, that plus 1 right there. So that means up 1. All right, so ready to do. Uh, all these graphs. So we'll start with the base function. Now you should already know what this looks like. If you don't, you can always make a table of values. And the smallest in the square root, you can smallest value you can plug in is zero. Now I'm going to go zero to one. Now normally you would do two, but square root two is uh, an irrational number. So the next nice number would be a four. Square root zero is zero. Square root one is one. Square root four is two. And you get the plot. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. Right there, I could keep going bigger and bigger. We get 9, 3. So what the graph's going to look like, it's this curve like that. Well, we're going to focus on two points in particular. The two that I just made really, really extra uh, obvious right there. 0, 0, and 1, 1. So let's go ahead. We're going to do the horizontal stretch first. So we're going to stretch by 2. And this graph will be the square root function with just a 1 half multiplied by x. So that's the function we're going to be graphing here. So all of our x values are going to get multiplied by 2. So I'm going to need a lot more positive x values. So our original point was 0, 0 that x coordinate of 0, if I write it out here, 0, 0, the x coordinate of 0 multiplied by 2 is still 0. Now with the other point, it was 1, 1. Now the x coordinate, when you multiply it by 2, is going to become 2. So there is the transformed points. Now if I kept going over to 4, 4 times 2 is 8, which will be 4, 6, 8, the y value remains unchanged at 2. All right, but again, I'm just going to use the two points, but you could, of course, draw more points. I could draw a better curve than that. It's supposed to get less steep and less steep the further you go to the right. Okay, so we're done with this next step. Now we're going to do the horizontal shift left 2. And the function we're going to be graphing, 1 half x plus 2. So now we're going to take care of that plus 2. All right, shifting left 2, that means the x coordinates of 0 and 2 and 8 are going to move left 2. So 0 is going to move over to negative 2. So there we go, negative 2. And we're going to get the point negative 2, 0. That 2, 1 point, when you move that point to the left, it's going to go to 0, 1. 
So that's our next point, 0, 1. And you could uh, graph the 8, which will be here at 6 and 2. And connect these three points together like that. All right, so we're getting there. The next step is vertical stretch. And we're going to do a vertical stretch of 1 half. Now this is going to be a little tricky, negative 1 half. A little tricky because vertically we only have the values uh, 0, 1, and 2. So they're going to get quite small. So it's going to be almost hard to draw the graph. X values are remaining unchanged, so we still have negative 2. Uh, the Y value of 0 is 0 multiplied by negative 1 half, still 0. All right, now we have the 0, 1. So the Y coordinate of 1 is going to get multiplied by negative 1 half, so it's going to become 0, negative 1 half. And I'm having trouble labeling this. Oh, I'll just label it as a point. 0 comma negative 1 half will be that point. Now I could go way out to 6, and here the y value would be negative 1. So when I said it's hard to draw this curve, it's because vertically there's very little ha happening here. Oh, great. Hopefully my chicken doesn't burn. All right. So there we go. We're almost done, except I totally didn't write the graph. The function we're graphing, so there is a negative 1 half square root 1 half x plus 2. All right, there we go. OK, last step. We have that plus 1 at the end, which is a shift up 1. Now, a lot of times the shifts are easier to visualize than the stretches because the shape of the graph doesn't change. And here you make, make sure you write your plus one outside. You don't want your square root to come over top of the plus one. Uh, so make sure your plus one's obviously outside. And this is a shift up one. So these old y values are just going to each go up by one. So we got negative two, one. D old y value of negative one half now it becomes positive one half so it's zero comma positive one half right there that's our y intercept and then the last over there at six is now y coordinate at zero all right so we connect these together okay so there's all of our graphs now when you graph on my open math you can only choose two points to create your square root graph and the two points you want to use I'll circle them in blue they're the two points that I basically the two points I paid attention to as we went further and further here you you have to use this uh, let's call it the origin point the original starting point you can use any other point on the parabola I recommend the second point here you could run out and use the third point instead of the second point especially if it's hard to, for example, on this last one, it may be a little hard to actually click on this one half value. It might be easier to do that uh, six zero uh, point instead.